There was this phony Nigerian pastor named T.B. Joshua. Now, I don't know if this guy's trying to sound like he's T.D. Jakes. He's like the African bird. T.B. Joshua, all right? And this false preacher, this phony, and look, there are all kinds of phony preachers like this all over Africa. These Pentecostal, charismatic type false preachers who just make all these predictions and try to deceive people and they're just taking their money and preaching lies and they're not preaching the truth and so forth. And this guy is a total fraud. But he comes out this last Sunday and makes this prediction. He had this prophecy. The Lord gave him this vision. And so he knows that the president is going to be a woman. So he's basically saying that Hillary was going to be elected. Now, it's obvious why this guy makes that prediction, because that's a pretty safe prediction. Why? Because, first of all, you could say, well, he's got a 50-50 chance, first of all. Yeah, but not only just that. All of the, he, notice, he didn't make this prediction six months ago, six weeks ago, right, a year ago. Notice, he makes this prediction two days before the election because all of the polls were saying that Hillary was way ahead. Hillary's way ahead. Hillary's going to win. And, and the fact that Donald Trump won was actually a shock to everyone. It was people were really surprised because the polling data showed him as being, you know, 4% behind. And it, you know, it didn't seem like it was going to happen for him. And it was, it was a big turnaround where everybody was like, whoa, you know, Hillary lost, Trump won. And by the way, it's a really close election because... You know, Trump won on the electoral college system, but he actually, last time I looked at it, he had less popular vote. He actually got less votes than Hillary. So it was actually a really tight, close election. But that surprised everyone. You see, a few days ago, everybody was saying, Hillary's got this in the bag. She's 4% ahead. She's going to win. So this guy isn't really stepping out on a limb in his mind. He comes out to, oh, by the way, I got this word from the Lord that, you know, the next president in the United States is going to be a woman. Well, now he's got egg on his face because <laughs> twist of fate and, you know, to everyone's surprise, she lost. She didn't win. So what's that mean about T.B. Joshua? You know what that means? That he's a liar and a fraud. Amen. Do you expect me to believe that God went to T.B. Joshua and told him, oh, the next president's going to be a woman, and he's just like, psych? <laughs> no. It tells me that God's not talking to T.B. Joshua at all, Amen. that he's making stuff up. That he's a fraud, that he's a liar, that he's just throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. And that's what these bunch of frauds, these bunch of charlatans, these bunch of fake preachers that go around Africa tricking people with their crusades and preaching lies and false doctrine. First of all, what T.B. Joshua preaches doesn't line up with the Bible. His doctrine doesn't line up with the Bible. That tells me already that he's a fraud. But when he makes a prediction like this, he shows himself to the world to be a fraud. But then what I thought was funny is just to see his followers trying to make excuses for him and trying to defend it. And it's just unbelievable to me. You know, people are brainwashed. Look, if I make a mistake, would you please just admit that I made a mistake? <laughs> now, I don't make predictions like this, and I never have, and I never will. I don't get word of knowledge from the Lord about future events. Never have. Don't believe I ever will. I go by the Bible. I have plenty in this book to keep me busy for the rest of my life. I have plenty to preach, plenty to say out of this book. I don't need to seek for these extra biblical revelations. You know, the Bible gives us everything we need to know all the way up until the second coming of Christ. He says, behold, I come quickly. He's coming with clouds. I mean, that's, that's really, you know, up to that point, we're good on information. We, we, he told us all about the tribulation. He told us all about the second coming. That's all we need to know. We're fine. We don't need to know two days early who the president's going to be, especially living in Nigeria. Yeah, that's real important. Make sure that all the people in Nigeria know who the American president's going to be two days in advance. Here, let me dispatch Gabriel with that message. I mean, what kind of... It's, it's ridiculous. But I'm, but I'm here to tell you 
that these frauds out there with their false predictions, their followers will defend them. Look, if I screw up, if I say something wrong from the pulpit, not talking predictions now because I'm not making any predictions, but if I say something in error from the pulpit, don't just go around and defend me to, to the bitter end or something and find a way to make it right when it was really wrong. Look, if you're wrong, you're wrong. But these sycophantic, cultic followers are just like, well, but, you know, maybe there still will be a woman president four years from now. That's not what he was talking about. They try to find a way to make it still be true. Well, just eventually there's going to be a female president. I mean, come on, folks. Why don't you just admit it? The guy's a fraud. Yeah. And by the way, while you're at it, why don't you admit that the whole stupid Jehovah's Witness religion is a fraud while you're at it? Yeah. Since they predicted the second coming of Christ six times and it never happened. Look it up. Six different dates that they said. 1914, 1918. I don't have the dates on hand. But in the early 20th century, six predictions. And while you're at it, why don't you declare the whole stupid Seventh-day Adventist religion a fraud too? Since their whole religion was built on the great disappointment when they predicted the, the second coming of Christ in 1844. And they try to distance themselves from that, but that is the basis of their whole religion. And you can go today to Adventist.org, not an anti-Adventist website. You could go to their own website, Adventist.org, and go to their statement of faith. And they have that stupid date in 1844 in their statement of faith that they still believe that day was real. <laughs> that day was still real. Even though Christ didn't come back, something happened on that day. Well, what happened? Well, it was something up in heaven happened. <laughs> something happened. Go look it up. Adventist.org, go to the Statement of Faith on so-and-so, the date, 1844. Something happened up there, and Jesus started cleaning up things up there and sweeping the temple and whatever. You know what? These people need to understand that the Bible is, is enough We've got Genesis to Revelation. We're not living back in the days of Jeremiah where they only had part of the Bible and where they, these prophets are having to constantly bring them more because the Bible is in the process of being revealed. You know, we got the whole Bible. We got Genesis to Revelation. And this is what we ought to be reading and studying and learning. And I guarantee you that, a that the vast majority of these followers of TB Joshua or any of these other kooks have not even read this book cover to cover but they're looking for a new revelation. Right. It's like, why don't you finish the one that God already gave you? Amen. I mean, that'd be like, that'd be like if, if, if somebody, somebody said like, oh, I can't wait for Paul Wittenberger's next movie to come, and he didn't even watch the last one. He's halfway into it. When's the next one? When's the, it's like, whoa, buddy. Why don't you finish the one that you've already got? It'd be like you're asking for seconds on your plate and you didn't even eat your meal. You're asking for another hot dog. You didn't even finish the one you're eating. Finish that one and then we'll talk. And God here has given you a lot of food here, a lot of spiritual meat, and reading it once is not going to be enough. Right. You need to read this again and again and again in order to glean it. But they're so excited to, ooh, I want to get something new. Or You know what it really comes down to is more interested than they are in spiritual things, they're interested in the carnal things of this world like who wins an election. Instead of the spiritual things of the Word of God, of the Bible, they're more interested in a political sermon than in a spiritual sermon. That's what's going on. Because they're carnal and they're focused on the things that are seen instead of the things that are not seen. But the things that are seen are temporal and the things that are not seen are eternal. 